Hey, it's Mike here, and today oils ranked from least healthy to healthy. We're talking about oils that are used for cooking or eating because one of these can't really be heated that well, but still needs to be included because it's popular. People are eating it. The point is, don't you love lists? I love lists. Even reading my own list, so I get to number four or three, I get excited even though I know the answer. And I even went an extra step with this list and created what is known as the oil algorithm. It's kind of like the Facebook algorithm, except it isn't designed to make you fight with your uncle over ideological differences to increase profits for advertising. Instead, it takes into account things like fatty acid composition and antioxidant potential, as well as various health effects from a bunch of different studies. Looked at a lot of studies for this one, so let's just go. Yes, I have a history with oil videos in my original popular oil video. I definitely was just trying to tear down the notion that all of these oils are health foods, despite them being like 100% fat and generally refined foods, but that left a lot of people thinking that all oils are equally as bad, and that is not the case. I even cover one which I believe to be a health food, one of the rare refined foods that's healthy, like vinegar in its own category. But there are a lot of people that just wanna be eating some level of oil, and they keep asking me, what about this oil, what about that oil? Avocado oil, which we're gonna cover, and on and on and on. So I figured, might as well make this video, and I had a lot of fun making it and nerding out really hard. Like, I probably look a little crazy because I've been staring at a screen for like eight hours. <laughs> but I do wanna have a little disclaimer here. This is going to be a very health detail oriented video. So if you have disordered eating patterns or anything like that around food, then, you know, be aware of that. All right, before we get into it, a quick word about the oil algorithm that I created. Uh, it's basically looking at fatty acids rating omega-3s as a positive effect, saturated fat as a negative effect because it is causally linked with atherosclerosis. And then it also measures antioxidants, which is really hard to do because all of the antioxidant studies have different measurement types but we're looking at not just antioxidant content. In fact, we didn't really look at that. We looked at antioxidant capacity, how effective it actually is at neutralizing free radicals. And then we had a bunch of other health effects that have been studied for different oils. And since those were very not comparable, I basically created a bonus or penalty that is added. If it's a positive effect, like lowering inflammation. It's gonna get it some extra points. If it's impairing artery function, that's subtracting some points. We're about to get to that first oil, but I have to add an honorary number 13 worst one here, which isn't really an oil. This is a video about oils, but I just have to mention that butter is worse than any oil here in terms of its effect on LDL, which again is really bad for heart disease. And it has a really low level of antioxidants. So I just didn't want anybody thinking that that would somehow be better than these oils. It's not. All right, now starting with number 12, the worst oil that's at least included on this list is palm kernel oil. Distinction that needs to be made is that this is not the same as your standard palm oil, which is from the palm fruit of the oil palm tree. This is from the kernel of that same tree. But the reason that it is worse is because it is up around 80% saturated fat. And as we'll get to in a little bit, that other palm oil is a bit lower. Now, I ranked it through the studies as having a pretty mediocre antioxidant content. And so that is what made it worse than coconut oil. You know, they're both around 80% saturated fat, but this one did worse. And that just, of course, brings me to number 11, which is, you guessed it, coconut oil. The saturated fat level is slightly higher than palm kernel oil. We're up into the 80s here. And yes, the only thing that raises LDL more than coconut oil from the studies that are out there is butter. And that's pretty impressive because butter is at about 60% saturated fat and coconut oil is about 80%. Why does one raise it more? Maybe it's the composition of those saturated fatty acids. Maybe it's the animal souls getting a little bit of revenge. Um, anyway, that's how it works in the human body apparently. But I have a whole video on coconut oil if you want to learn more about that. Let's just move on to the next one, which is, you also guessed it, number 10, palm oil, this time palm fruit oil. It has marginally lower, I almost want to say marginally lower saturated fat at about 50% compared to that palm kernel oil. Both of them, total side tangent. Neither of these are good for orangutans. In case this was an orangutan health video, what goes down in Indonesia on the rainforest, not good. But in terms of artery function as well, this is one of the oils from this study that had an acute detrimental effect on artery function in healthy individuals, about a 30% lowering in flow-mediated dilation, which is an artery function marker. 
you don't want that. Now I can just show you a little hint of the spreadsheet that I made. It's not in any particular order, but you can see the breakdown and you can see that I made a fatty acid score. And that's a result of the positive effect of omega-3's negative effect of saturated fat. Then I have that antioxidant score as well as that health bonus. And I will link the spreadsheet for people who wanna nerd out on this. You can see how I came to the antioxidant scores by looking at four or five different studies. But it was really hard to make an antioxidant score. I basically had to take studies with as many oils compared as possible and create a sliding scale between one to 10 that could then be compared across studies. It's not perfect but it's there. All right, number nine is soybean oil. You can see the saturated fat drops off quite a bit here. Soy is at least a little bit of omega-3s. They're probably not doing much. It has a mediocre antioxidant score and it has a lot of omega-6s. So it gets a little bit of points off that. I say a little bit because the whole omega-6 to omega-3 ratio thing, I think actually has a lot to do with the negative omega-6 effects of animal fat, in particular from that arachidonic acid, which is higher in animal products. It's sort of a marker for that consumption. And then it's also just means you're eating less omega-3s and they're beneficial, but plant-based omega-6s are probably not as bad. But the reason it's still a negative effect is that they do lower the amount of short chain omega-3s that are converted into long chain omega-3s like DHA. So I put that in there. And for the final blow, soybean oil was also another one of those detrimental ones for artery function in healthy subjects. Not good. Anyway, moving on to number eight, avocado oil. Yes, I've never talked about avocado oil before and it's becoming very popular. So now you can see what it's all about. The saturated fat amount is pretty good. It's down at around 12%. It doesn't really have omega-3s and it has a lot of polyunsaturated fats, generally good when you're replacing saturated fats, but its antioxidant score was abysmal. It was the worst in the study that it looked at pretty much. Couldn't find anything about it affecting artery health. There isn't that much research out there on it. So it's sort of a little bit of a, a neutral oil in terms of all of this, of course. It does have the benefit of going to 520 degrees for a smoke point. Here's the chart for all the smoke points. I didn't really have this affect things, but it's worth knowing in terms of the context of the oil. And even though it's lower down on the list, this is sort of the beginning of a bunch of oils sort of scoring the same. So I wouldn't take any of that too seriously. But the next one is a tie between sunflower and safflower oil at number seven. They basically have the exact same profile. They do have lower saturated fat, which is great. You know, they don't have any omega threes, but they have that high omega six, which dung them a little bit, lost some points there. Ding them, dung? I don't know. But I was amazed that they came to the exact same score because of the antioxidants. The sunflower oil did really well in one study and really bad in another study and the safflower oil did mediocre. They both landed at the exact same number and tied. Kind of crazy. But they both get that omega-6 penalty. Anyway, moving on to number six, which is refined or standard olive oil. The saturated fat, again, in the same range, it's about 13% and antioxidants, it's still kind of marginal. And it was one of the oils in the study for the detrimental effects on artery function. So how could it possibly be this high up on the list? Well. That brings me to this study of 500,000 people, which appears to have lumped olive oil and extra virgin olive oil together. And because of how well it still did, I can't say that it was that negative. For example, it was still associated with lower overall mortality and lower heart disease mortality. Anyway, moving on to number five, pumpkin seed oil. This actually does have a little bit higher saturated fat at 18%, but it broke away from the pack because it was just killing it in terms of antioxidants. Now, so that's a high practical antioxidant effect that could prevent those lesions in your artery from forming. Another little benefit that I didn't include in the effect though, was it probably has a high level of zinc. I couldn't find an exact number, but that's unique among other oils. Maybe that helps with the immune system, who knows, but there is one caveat here and that the smoke point is pretty low at 320 degrees Fahrenheit, which means you basically just have to cook on low. All right, number four, canola oil. I had such a hard time with this one because it was such, such a Gemini in the sense that it was so good in other ways and then had some risks in other ways. You might be thinking, well, this is that evil industrial oil that the big corporations are trying to sell to us. But look, we got to look at the health effects here and the studies. And just to the fatty acid composition, it has very low saturated fat, yet it has a considerable amount of those omega-3s, that ALA, which is 
Great. And back to that study of 500,000 people, we can look at this forest plot. A lot of you know how to read those now, and we can see the, see the little TIE fighters there. If their wings are not touching, then they're statistically significantly different, and we can see that canola oil in terms of heart disease mortality was lower than butter and margarine, and it trended lower. So very worth mentioning. That's a huge plus, and you might actually be wondering, is that li little lower saturated fat level even gonna make a difference from something like olive oil? Well, we have this randomized control trial in women with high cholesterol, and it found that, yes, the cholesterol level lowered significantly more in the canola group than the olive group. And then we have that trans fat concern where that deodorizing process can lead to the production of trans fats, which is annoying because it doesn't have to be that way. You know, that's why maybe extra virgin canola oil should become more of a thing, but it's generally still quite low and definitely lower than animal products in terms of trans fat. And if it really was doing a lot of damage, I don't think that it would be trending with that lower mortality compared to all of those other fats. Now to another area that was difficult, and that is the antioxidant effect. One of the studies that actually did quite well with antioxidant effect, but then to a mouse study, you know I don't like mouse studies, but the information is out there. It lowered the antioxidant status of the mice. Were they overfed? I don't know, but that's a major red flag. So I evened those out into a mediocre score. And because this made pretty big news and I didn't talk about it, I wanna talk about that canola oil other mouse study where it was like, it's horrible for brain function in Alzheimer's. You know, they said mice who were fed canola oil were basically not as good mentally and had worse markers for Alzheimer's. There are some major issues with this study though. First of all, they're like, oops, we overfed them more calories, which is the means there was not a good control group. This canola group was 20% heavier. So imagine somebody being like 200 pounds versus 240 pounds. You know, that's gonna lead to some of these other potential metabolic issues or raising other markers. But now you understand why I was frustrated with this oil. Anyway, high smoke point of about 400, which is good. Moving on to number three, which is that extra virgin olive oil. The fat content is of course the same as the previous olive oil we looked at. The antioxidant content is higher. And this brings me to how it was actually kind of difficult to find extra virgin olive oil compared with a bunch of different oils. It took me a while, but I found this study and I really thought that extra virgin olive oil would be like off of the charts based off how people act about it compared to other oils at least. From my previous video, I talk about how one serving is still only equivalent to like a blueberry in terms of content of antioxidants, but looking to this chart, we can see that yes, it was better than normal olive oil as we would have predicted, but it actually got its butt kicked a little bit by pumpkin seed oil, which I, again, previously mentioned was great in this area. The artery function topic here is a little two-sided in the sense that, you know, there are a lot of studies out there showing that it helps with artery function, but we have that one study being like, ah, it, it decreased flow mediated dilation by 30%, which I would just say is a red flag. But in a lot of cases we can see it's helping. I mean, this study, type one diabetics, butter versus olive oil, and you can see that the butter lowers that artery function and the extra virgin olive oil helps it out a bit. Why is there that variability? I don't know, but back to the work of Esselstyn treating people with severe heart disease. He advocates against oils, even this one. And I have to say, you know, for that type of person, this could just be another source of saturated fat. You can get the antioxidant benefits from eating non-oils, and we really would need a thorough investigation to know how much of a difference that it would make, if any. But for now, I just say, we don't know if we'll push it over the edge, so I wouldn't include it if you're trying to really fight heart disease. That's just my personal opinion. But again, back into the context of a standard American diet to that study of 500,000 people, lower heart disease, mortality, that is worth mentioning. Another really interesting point was from those same people who did that canola oil, brain Alzheimer's mouse study. They also mentioned that in mice, you see the opposite effect with olive oil. However, again, the way they do their studies, they don't appear to have good comparison groups. They just compared extra virgin olive oil to coconut oil or butter to super high saturated fat. 
fats, which are not a good control group, so we don't know if olive oil was sort of just acting as a control group there and giving better biomarkers. However, I gave it some extra points because it appears to raise glutathione, which is an antioxidant within the brain. So positive signal there at least. And final point I have to mention though, there's a lot of olive oil fraud with extra virgin olive oil. So if you're not getting the right one, boom, you're bumping yourself back down to that normal olive oil. Anyway, that's where that one lands. Let's move on to number two, which is hemp seed oil. It's the best source of omega-3s so far at 20%. It's also a really not good source of saturated fat, which is awesome. From this study, it's mopping up of free radicals was really good, really good antioxidant score, but we just don't have that many studies on it. I think in the future, we're gonna see a bunch of benefits from it, but you know, that's where it is now. It's also worth mentioning that you have to keep this refrigerated and you don't even wanna leave it open for too long because it could oxidize more. And it also doesn't have a high smoke point. It's 330 degrees, so we're talking about some, you know, cooking on low a little bit. Anyway, I look forward to future data on that, but that brings us to one that has a lot of data since my original oil video, and that is our number one oil, flaxseed oil. Frankly, the profile is incredible in terms of fatty acids. It's super high in omega-3s, super low in saturated fat. But that's the problem is that you cannot cook with it, which people are gonna be like, well, then it doesn't even count. But you can still do things like salads and dressings and stuff like that. But yeah, you can't cook it over 225 degrees. So like maybe like a super short, super light braising of greens with water for a second. I don't know. That's risky even then. But this gives us our final list of the zero to 100 score here. You can just take a quick look at that or pause if you want to. But flaxseed oil has so many positive effects. Don't go crazy and overdo it, but it has so many positive effects here that I do, again, consider it a healthy food, despite being an oil. Oh my God, I've come so far. From this randomized control trial, in people with heart disease, it doubled artery function, which is crazy. And then looking to several inflammation markers, it dropped them all by 40 or 50%. And from this 2021 meta-analysis of like 30 randomized control trials, well, it didn't appear to have any great effect on LDL lowering. It did lower those inflammatory cytokines, so that's good. Despite not having a direct LDL effect, I think it still has really good blood artery effects, and that has to do with the sort of blood thinning properties of omega-3s, and that brings me to this study that found that yes, flaxseed oil lowers platelet aggregation, so that's gonna decrease risk of having a heart attack. And the antioxidant content is pretty good from this also 2021 randomized control trial. Yes, it actually decreased oxidative stress levels and increased antioxidant biomarkers in people. And I did stumble upon the negatives of perhaps consuming too much flaxseed oil, and one of them was diarrhea in parentheses oil. Does that mean straight oil diarrhea? I mean, does that just turn you into a human oil spill? I don't know, just don't overdo it. But again, like hemp seed oil, you have to baby this one a little bit. You have to keep it refrigerated. In fact, you don't wanna leave it open too long because it will oxidize as well. All right, I can feel this video getting pretty long. So I will just say, even if you didn't like the official ranking order here, you know, maybe you're rooting for some oil that didn't do that well. I at least hope that you learned something. I learned a lot. Also went insane deciding to make an algorithm. Why did I do that? I don't know. We're all slaves to the oil algorithm <laughs> anyway. In terms of these oils, the ones that stuck out to me, of course, the flaxseed oil was impressive. Extra virgin olive oil, also a little bit of a Gemini situation where there's a lot of positive effects here but there's still some little, little bit of red flags here. You know, that saturated fat could add up. It's not super high though. Canola oil, annoyingly positive and negative. But again, both of those oils, much better than butter or margarine. And again, coconut oil and palm oils, just they're horrible. The people should actually not be eating them. <laughs> like they're actually gonna increase the amount of heart attacks that not only normal people have, but that vegans have in general, which I think is really disappointing. And palm oil is in like everything. So let's get it out of this food. I wish I had time to do more oils as well. But my one final warning here is that, again, oils are 100% fat. Even if you are eating the healthiest one, if you are just having maybe three tablespoons a day added, 
to all of the food that you're eating compared to if you weren't eating oil you know, throughout the day, that's maybe 350 extra calories in 10 days. I don't wanna get too caught up on calories and pounds of fat here, but that's like 35 pounds a year, which is not gonna be healthy for anybody, even if it's all from flax oil. All right, that's it for today. Let me know if there are any oils that you wish that I included. You know, I would have liked to get corn oil or peanut oil in there, but I was just, it was enough already. Hope the oil algorithm was interesting to you and like and subscribe, all that good stuff. If you learned anything, and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.